After some false starts, Eugene Lin is living the developer dream and is actually making money selling iPhone apps. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Eugene Lin. This is my first time at Ignite, so thanks for having me. During the day, uh, I spend my time in Redmond working at a large company where we do some kind of software stuff. Uh, I want to point out that what I'm about to cover here was not done using any company equipment or property. Um, a while back, this guy named Steve came out with a phone, and the phone was really awesome because like money just flew out of his button in the developer's hands. So like six months ago, I thought I would try my hand at it, and I'm going to summarize that six months in the next four and a half minutes. So to start out with, I went out and got an iPhone, obviously. I went out and bought a MacBook as well, which was really expensive, so I tried to get it as cheap as possible. And then to join the developer program, I paid $100 to Apple, which it turns out if you charge to a credit card, costs you like $98 with the cash back. So I had to figure out what kind of app I was gonna make. And like all bad developers, I chose myself as the audience. And so I figured out all the things that I liked, and then I picked the one that made the most sense, which was board games. Because as you all know, board games are the path to riches. So. I want to create a scorekeeping application, and I took a look at what was out in the App Store. And most of them, you know, they were like very so-so, and the reviews reflected it. So I put together a plan that my app was gonna be awesome. It was gonna look like an iPhone, shiny, pretty. It was gonna be like what Apple would have included it if they realized how much money there was in board games. So I created my application, and I was convinced it was the best application in the entire world. I mean, it was amazing. Everyone was gonna buy it. So I went in the App Store every day to find out who's buying it, who's buying it, and it did pretty well, but not like pay for my iPhone well. So it was time to start over. So my next app was called Hang Time, and the idea was simple. The idea was to convince people to throw their iPhone in the air as hard as possible and compete for the most time in the air. Um, and in the end, in the end, you would win, or everyone lost. And um, it turned out that this this free clip art I chose was was making a bunch of trademark lawyers unhappy at Apple, and so they rejected it. So I had to create a, a new piece of artwork, which was you know lots of hard work, and uh, and resubmitted the application. Well, it turned out that actually the general premise of the idea wasn't very cool. So I said, well, we'll come up with a new version of the app. Instead of throwing your phone in the air, put it in your pocket and throw yourself in the air. And uh, Again, you know, the guys at Apple are smart, and they were like, what are you, crazy? So it turns out that actually, four days after they rejected mine, another app got accepted that was exactly the same as mine. And so Apple approved mine just in time for all of us to get a patent infringement notice. So we're all done with hang time, and, uh, and I decided I need to move on to my next project. So in the news, meanwhile, Michael Jackson had turned into an actual zombie, and so it was time to take advantage of that publicity to create the Michael Jackson detector. With a, with a few simple questions, this application would tell you whether you were the king of pop. It, it, it turns out you're not. So, um, again, some people didn't share the humor in this, and so it was rejected. I decided to go back to the, my engineering mindset and say, well, what if the application checked my server before acting in a politically correct way or acting in a funny way? And so I submitted the application in politically correct mode, and, uh, you know, these guys aren't idiots. They were like, no, 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 this is not going to happen, and so it got rejected. And it turns out Michael Jackson apps all together, for those of you who are enterprising out there, not happening anymore. So I was still in the hole, and I needed a way to make up for my Mac, because I was $1,000 in the hole. The games category was filled with real people, like electronic arts, but the entertainment category was filled with beers and farts. So I thought, well, in college I did this project around 3D graphics and viewing 3D models and images, and so I decided to create an application called Peekaboo. But based on what was out there in the app store today, and I wanted some of that Steve Jobs butt money, I said, well, we're going to fill Peekaboo with some more interesting images. So off to the App Store it went, and as you can expect, the approval process went astoundingly well. But eventually, Peekaboo was approved, and it showed up in the App Store, and compared to the other 3D applications out there, it really just completely blew their pants off, and in some cases, their tops. So um, it also helped prove how understanding my wife was. So. Um, 
Kigaboo was out there. And meanwhile, my translation firm suggested that maybe I should translate the description into Japan, because the Japanese are crazy for this kind of application. Well, it turns out the Japanese are crazy. And uh, the application did quite well in Japan. Um, in fact, hitting number one in paid entertainment for a number of weeks. So overall, compared to, P compared to Score Pro, Peekaboo sales were just off the charts. It paid for my iPhone, paid for my Mac. Uh, and in fact, other than in Japan, it actually is doing pretty well in the United States as well. So, so that's my story. Uh, I had a, had a couple, of, couple of bad apples at first, but eventually I found my way to being a Japanese porn king for some reason. And, uh, and so now I'm just going to try and continue giving the people what they want. So uh, uh, thanks a lot for having me here, Brady. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you want to peek for a dollar, I'll see you in the app store.